down this key, you see the multi-matrix color dimensions are possible to adjust. Let's just go to 24 and then go to um, the, the red vector. You see the little red um, uh, tile on the color chart is more red now and the car is more red. If I turn it the other way, you basically see how it's made green. And if I then change the hue of this, you can see that I can change the color of the car to green. Or I could even make it, let me see, if I go in the other direction, I should be able to make it blue, okay? Let's go there, you see? You can use a real RCP to control essentially every relevant setting in DreamChip cameras, and that makes integration in broadcast workflows very easy. For example, you can take advantage of the advanced color shading settings in the DreamChip camera to match it up with any other camera on your production. And the Blue Pill extension cables also make it very easy to connect your camera to power and control. And all you need in addition is an SDI cable to bring your picture to the video routers. RCP Pro has the world's most innovative and attractive RCP joystick with a large OLED display on top. And the joystick follows all the conventions with push action for GPI and the master black ring on the knob. Blue Pill runs a device core that talks to the camera and any number of Skyhoy controllers can connect to the Blue Pill and you can enjoy synchronized access to all parameters in the camera. RCP Pro is designed as a single camera RCP, but it does have an eight camera selector built in natively to access more cameras easily. To start up this video, let's take a look at cabling. We have an Atom 1 Mini Zoom, Atom 1 and Atom 1 Mini camera on the set today. One of these cameras is connected to a simple Ethernet to serial converter right here. So we have cable from the camera. It gets power from a standard DC power supply via the um, supply dream chip cable and the signal go over to this Ethernet to serial converter that sends IS485 commands to the camera. It's connected to our network here. The two other cameras, they have exactly the same, but it's a different converter, so it has a different IP address, but two cameras are connected to the same. And it's um, important scenario actually, because depending on your topology, you may want to have one or more cameras daisy chained with different IDs on the serial bus, while other cameras may be located at a place where it's more convenient to just have a separate converter with ethernet. So we have three cameras, we have two serial converters, and it's all going to be very simple connecting that to blue pill inside this RCP Pro and have reactor set this up and move cameras around as you please. But I also wanna highlight that the Blue Pill as a standalone product has the feature of extension cables. And extension cables are these very cool additions. You can basically screw them onto the side here with this special plug. There are some knobs here that you can use to, um, to attach it and fix it to the Blue Pill. What comes out in the other end is basically a connector that fits exactly your DreamChip camera. So this extension cable, which you order for the DreamChip cameras, will have IS-485 coming out here, and it just plugs in with this Hirose connector into the camera. And it also powers the camera, either by the DC input on the side of the extension cable, or if you get the blue pill in a power version, it supports PoE+. Plus. So it has enough juice inside to send out the 12 volt power supply for your dream chip camera on this cable. So that's a very, very elegant solution, but you have so many ways you can combine that. And I wanna invite you to make sure you check out our online resources for how the various cabling workflows are uh, possible in your case. I would like to move on to the RCP Pro and show you how this wonderful device controls these cameras. So. We are connected to the Atom 1 Mini Zoom camera with the RCP Pro right now. And you can see we have iris control. So as I'm moving the iris joystick on the RCP Pro, I am controlling the iris of the lens built into the Atom 1 Mini Zoom. We also have pedestal control up here. So you see I'm in charge of the, um, I can manage the, uh, the black tones of the image. And you may know from RCP joysticks that if you prefer to, to control that on the ring of the joystick, it's actually available right here as well. So as I'm turning 
this ring, you see that I'm able to crush or to highlight the black tones in the image. And you actually, you can see that it's following along on this display over here. So that's possible on the ring of the joystick as well, along with the iris right here. So that's pretty neat. Let's see, I like this one. Now, um, that was the standard RCP operations we can do on this one. You also uh, wanna notice that we have a single cable coming to this one. So it's PoE powered. Very nice, this is standard Skahoy products. They are always PoE powered and that's the cabling workflow we suggest. Other than that, on this RCP you have a log RCP function. So now you can move the joystick as you like. And then if you release it, then we are back here in this um, position. Then we can um, usually uh, move around in the various menus of settings using these knobs up here. And you see that's no different on the Dreamship cameras. So the uh, default configuration we have made has a home screen. It has an exposure screen right here. They, we have secondary options if we hold down the shift key that we can access and so on. And we'll take a closer look at that in this video. Now let's look at the menus to uh, control the dream chip camera and what we have hidden inside of that one. The home screen menu is our suggestion for the most used parameters in the camera. So you see we, we can enable and disable the auto exposure correction here. If we disable it, we have access to uh, the uh, shutter speed essentially of the camera. So we can set that. The limit of that would be the frame rate, which is if we go to the miscellaneous page set to 50i frames per second. Going back here, we can enable and disable the auto white balance. Right now it's uh, disabled, uh, now it's enabled. If we disable it, it also means we can trigger the white balance by pushing this button. And in the white balance menu down here, you have access to basically the same things, but you also have a white balance preset that we can load. So if I, um, it's currently at 22 Kelvin. So if I reload that, you see this. If I turn a little bit, I reload a different preset. So hopefully I can find something that is a little bit more to my liking. And if not, then I can also execute the trigger right there to pick it up and I can uh, modify the lens a little bit on the joystick here. Now, um, we are in the, the uh, white balance and, and post um, uh, processing section. We have here, we have uh, uh, stuff like brightness, which is um, probably a mathematical calculation made on the image pixels, not really close to the sensor, as I understand it. We have contrast. If I press and hold, I'm always resetting. Uh, I can also uh, turn the hue knob and totally molestrate the image here. Reset again back and I can also manipulate the saturation of the camera. So Dreamship cameras, they have an amazing amount of things you can do on them. It just read their reference guide and you'll see so many parameters. And basically Skahoy has support for all of them. So we implemented everything. Not everything is mapped onto the configuration necessarily, but much of it is on the RCP. So the RCP is focused on uh, shading this camera. And this is why you also find things like the multi-matrix and the color conversion and color cross conversion features in here in the color menu. But before we get there, let's just move to filter and knee. So you see we have standard enable, disable knee, knee point, knee slope that we can set here. We have filters as well, which is essentially how sharp the image is and how much denoising you will make on that. As you increase details, you have more noise and you can compensate and so on. So those are available in this menu as well. But if we go up here into the uh, exposure menu, you, you find things like a red, green, and blue gain. We have um, also broken out auto white balance, which is in fact down here as well. But the reason is uh, if you enable this, you won't have access to the red, green, and blue gain. So I uh, decided that it would be pretty neat to have it close to these settings. You have then uh, black, red, green, and blue. And if you hold down shift, you have offset red, green, and blue. You have the pedestal setting right there, which is this uh, synthetic parameter coming from those. So basically you can see if I hold down shift and I adjust these values that the pedestal value is depending on the uh, red, green, and blue. So if we look at the image and we uh, let's just tone it a little bit exaggerated green right here, then you'll still see that if, if we uh, hold down shift still and then I move the ring on the joystick, you still see that I am with the ring, I am basically moving these values synchronously up and down. So um, with the pedestal. So it's manipulating the red, green, and the blue offsets here. We have flare, uh, red, green, and blue as well in this exposure menu. 
And um, those are all subject to uh, the, uh, the, the color uh, presets you can store and recall. So if I press and hold this one, then I'm uh, storing certain of these values. I believe the black, red, green, and blue, and also the settings you find in here. Maybe we can change these a little bit uh, for second uh, preset. And if we change our pedestal value, um, let's do it to this point. Uh, it doesn't look good, I totally agree, but we just want to exaggerate a little bit to have something to, to work with. And then we can store a second color preset right here. So now if I press this button, let's just check the values here and here. Okay, so I can now recall the first values here. And we also see on this page, these values are recalled. Then if I press here, then we go back to the second set of values. So those are color presets for you that takes in a specific set of Dream Chip parameters. It's a feature inside Reactor that runs on Blue Pearl platform that you can even customize. So if there are parameters not included that you would like to include in a color preset, you can do that through configuration. But this is what we propose in our standard configuration for the Dream Chip cameras. So that's the exposure menu. Uh, if you press and hold the encoders, we can basically reset some of these values a little bit and that's gonna be helpful. So uh, let's just do the same over here so that we have more or less a clean image again without all the modifications that I just did. Let's move on to color because color is a, is, uh, a menu that contains one of the really amazing things about the Dream Chip camera, and that is how you can manipulate the multi-matrix. And you also have uh, color dimensions for color cross correction and, um, and so on up here. So if we just take those first, if you read into Dream Chip's universe, they have C0 to C8, which um, some uh, color conversion parameters that you can set. And you can see as I'm browsing through those, we have some preset values here. And um, I have seen at least the color cross conversion is related to the white balance that you load into the camera. Um, so if we take C2, whatever that means, I'm not an expert in that, we are able to, um, to do something that at least affects the image here. You'll have to, to understand this in more detail, read DreamChip's documentation or ask them, but this parameter is straight out of the camera and we are able to manipulate it uh, in, in this way. Um, let's just do something that we can actually notice because once again, I have color presets which are related to exactly this. By uh, pressing and holding this one, I can actually, um, let's move somewhere else and do something that is even more crazy and store that over here. After a little bit of fiddling, I managed to get back to something that I could enjoy. And now I wanna show you how I can recall the previous settings by pressing these preset recall buttons here that will essentially recall settings on the color dimensions up here. Now let's move on to the amazing multi-matrix color control. And it's enabled on this knob. You can see it's now enabled. We have a number of color vectors that we can adjust. There are basically 24 of them right here because if you hold down this key, you see the multi-matrix color dimensions are possible to adjust. So uh, DreamChip Cameras has 24 of these by default. Uh, we, you can go to 12 uh, if you want only 12, and that means you, are, you have only 12 uh, choices here with this rotary encoder. You can go to 32, and then you have seriously 32 dimensions that you can adjust with saturation and hue. So that's a lot, okay? Let's just go to 24 and then go to um, the, the red vector. Because we have over here, we have a red car, we have a red color chart or with a red... Um, a little tile on it. So if I change the saturation heavily, you see the little red um, uh, tile on the color chart is more red now and the car is more red. If I turn it the other way, you basically see how it's made green. And if I then change the hue of this, you can see that I can change the color of the car to green or I could even make it, let me see if I go in the other direction, I should be able to make it blue, okay? If I want a blue Tesla instead, then and that's actually kind of my favorite. So let's go there, you see? Then we can move on to a different color vector. What do we want to attack right now? What about some greenish stuff? Or we can find the blue. See if we can find the plate over there. I'm exaggerating this so you can see the change. And this is how you can match this camera up to many different other cameras. But you see that I'm able to increase the saturation of the 
uh, Skahoy uh, colored uh, metal over there, and I can also change the um, the hue of that one if I wanted to manipulate that into red. And right now I've also increased the noise in the image and so on. All this in the interest of making you guys aware that we have this multi-matrix capability of the camera, which you should probably not choose to use to really rotate the color wheel, but you should use it to match your camera to those other cameras on your production. And that's a major feature in the DreamShip cameras, the multi-matrix control. And we give you everything that you can dream of from that control. All the dimensions are there, all the um, parameters that you can control using color matrix in the DreamShip cameras. Next up, we wanna talk about multi-camera control and multi-master control. So far, the RCP Pro has been the master of talking to the DreamChip camera. So this one is control of the serial converter to the camera. But I wanna introduce one of our other popular RCP panels, the Colorfly. It's designed for immediate instant access to multiple cameras iris channel with the faders, the motorized faders on this panel here. And then over here, you have a camera selector typically that will give you access to the settings. This controller is very compact if you have a multi-camera scenario as an alternative to RCPs. And it can even work simultaneously with the RCP Pro. So what we wanna do now is to have the RCP Pro being the host and the Colorfly being the guest. And we, what we do now, we, we are in the RCP Pro web interface of Reactor for the RCP Pro. We also see here is Colorfly basically. And, and Colorfly is also a Blue Pill Inside product if we look at what is running on it, we have the hardware manager running. So it, all it does is it offering itself as a raw panel panel on the network. So we can discover it and we can connect to it. And that's what we'll do from the RCP Pro. So what we do now is we add a panel and we see that we are searching on the network for panels uh, that we can add to the RCP Pro. We apparently have a lot of Skyhoy panels in this facility, no wonder. And uh, let me see, the Colorfly here is um, likely to be the one we wanna select. We can also filter to just make sure, yes, it is this Colorfly V3. So we'll just add this one. And it seemed to connect right away, but we can always make a little test here by pressing this button that's very, very useful. And it lights up in white and so on. But we already see that um, we have a configuration loaded onto it here that says color uh, fly v3 generic camera control. And it has set up a menu which is currently empty because we have added no cameras whatsoever to it. What we'll do at first is simply to add our existing Atom 1 mini zoom camera right here like this, and we now find that camera being available on this button. So what you see now, if, if we go to the color gain menu, for instance, we go to color gain over here, you see it's the same values in these displays as we see up here. So as I'm changing the color gain on the RCP, it's immediately reflected on the color fly. And you can change that the other way around as well, of course. So um, actually what we wanna do is to enable the fader section over here. So we, what we um, need to, to do is to uh, modify the configuration chosen by default. So we can see that um, the, the configuration driving the camera is a DreamChip Plus lens, which makes sense because we have an Atom 1 Mini Zoom. And uh, if we did not have a lens, we would just choose this one. We'll do that in a moment with the Atom 1 over there, but um, we need a special profile to drive the faders in addition to the main configuration. And that would be the Atom 1 Mini Iris and Master Black controls. So what you see is that we have a motorized fader on the RCP currently reflecting the Iris position over here. And we have a preview button here. We also have up here, we can enable and disable the automatic exposure correction. We can also adjust the gain. We can hold and uh, press and hold these buttons. And you see the display is actually re reflecting the changes in the ISO speed, which I think we'll also see out here on, on this home screen. You see the, auto, uh, the ISO speed uh, is changed on this button. So we have chosen to map a few things down onto these two-way buttons that sit here on the top of this audio channel. But the, the cool thing is that you see the motorized fader is synchronous with the joystick over on the RCP. As we are moving that, the, the fader is moving along with it. And that's, of course, uh, what is cool about Colorfly. If you had multiple pages of cameras you could go to, then you will see that all the faders would move around like that if you had 
you know, five or 10 cameras and multiple pages to navigate. So the next thing we want to do is to add some more cameras to both controllers, and that would be the additional DreamChip cameras over there. And let's first, uh, first do it on the RCP. So uh, if we hold down the shift key, we have a camera selector with a single camera right here. And um, that camera selector is managed by this list uh, that comes up uh, in the UI of Reactor if you press this button, camera selector. But I'll now um, add it first as a device. So I'll just search here, Dream Chip, and you see that we have Atom 1, we have Atom 1 Mini, Mini Zoom, the SSM 500, slow-mo camera. So let's just first add the Atom 1 camera, and then I will add another one, the Atom 1 Mini camera right here. Um, good. Okay, so you see that they already popped up in our so-called constant set. So our camera selector that is available to us here is popping up here. Now, the wrong profile is chosen. We, can't, we do not have lens control on these, so we need to simply just select this one. I'm not sure it makes a big difference in this case though, but there's uh, no control of, of the lens because that's fixed on those two cameras. While on the Dream Chip uh, Atom 1 Mini Zoom, you have a lens built in that you can control with the joystick here. But we have access of all the other parameters and that of course is the takeaway that the RCP control of everything related to the sensor is absolutely available to us. So that was our cameras added over here. Let's just check. So if we go to the camera number two, which was the Atom one, it uh, appears like uh, we would have access to this one, but we also see the display is blanking out because we do not have those values from the camera just yet. It actually appears that we just added the device, but we need to configure it because we did this manually and uh, some cameras can be automatically discovered on the network. Others need to have manual IP address. This, uh, if we look at the Atom 1 Mini Zoom, you see that we have an IP address of this converter and that one has one as well. And I wanna show you a little trick that is very useful if you um, do this. If we bring up the terminal here, we can open a session to the IP address of, uh, we could do 44, which is uh, this one. And what we'll see in here is that all the time the controller is asking the camera for various details about it. So it's getting this information back. We should not mess with that. Actually, this is one reason why you have a single master talking to that camera, not to have multiple devices trying to, to talk to it. So let's stay clear of that and then instead move over to the other IP address of that converter up there, which has a daisy chained connection to the cameras, supplying power and signal to both of them. And if we type in 100 identify, we get a response from both cameras. And we see that Atom 1 is on ID number one and um, Atom 1 Mini is on ID number two. This is gonna be useful. So as I go back here, I can now adjust Atom 1, setting up the IP address of this camera. We'll do that here, 10 and 48. Type in the port, the bus ID was one. Thank you. and. I think we will see in the background here, we will see that it's connecting to this guy. Was it the right IP address? Yes, it was. And there you go, it's connected now. Let's do the same for the Atom 1 Mini. And it had bus ID number two on the same IP address, and we now have three cameras connected. We can even perform a little test here. So you see on the output of the Atom 1, we have it flipping around. Uh, that's the test that we can execute on this camera. And uh, we can also see that we actually have things popping up. We are on the Atom 1 here, and we see we have settings available on this camera. So if we wanna manipulate, for instance, the uh, shutter speed on this one, then we can, uh, we can totally do so. On, uh, on, on this setting right here. That's possible. Uh, it seems like this has a pretty high shutter speed of value for the exposure time. So that's probably because the video mode is 25 frames per second. We could change that if we wanted to because it's different from the one that we had on the Atom 1 at that uh, mini zoom that was 50i frames per second. And then even if we go to the Atom 1 mini, we have also 50i. Um, and on the home screen, we see these settings for uh, so on. We don't have the output from the Atom 1 Mini, but we do have from the Atom 1. 
The main point here is that we have now three cameras on this camera selector on this RCP. Now, obviously, a real RCP like RCP Pro is really nice. You have this joystick, which is classic, iconic, amazing, necessary, whatever word you want to use about it. The issue is, even though we have multiple cameras we can control from this one, we have this selector built in, it's not always ideal with a joystick that won't move with the different iris levels that different cameras would have. Now, in this case, we have only a single camera that actually has iris, because if we go to the others, then it's blanked out. These have a fixed lens, but in other cases, it would be a problem. This is why the Colorfly is so great, because there you have the motorized faders, and they will always follow along, and as you change pages, they move into position, and so on. Now, um, we have added those three cameras over here. We can do the same on the Colorfly. So from the collection of cameras we have, we can basically go and pick also the uh, Atom one and add it as the second camera here. And um, in this case, still, this channel is not being used because it's not... Um, it doesn't have this lens, and we also have the Atom 1 Mini here, which is now added as the third camera. So as I'm changing between these cameras, you see that they are picking up the same settings that we had on the RCP Pro. Um, if I add, I, I would still be able, though, to have access to the gain and to the auto um, exposure correction. And therefore, if I choose a profile for this one, we will have access to those things, but not to the, to the lens. So you see here, we have now access to the uh, gain settings. I can adjust those using these buttons. And then finally, if we pick the last one here, this one, that channel is also enabled. But the faders won't be enabled like it is on the first one right here. So that was two of the main options you have for camera control from Skahoy. The Colorfly multi-camera control, base controller, very, very compact motorized faders the RCP Pro, which is the pro's choice for RCP control for basically any camera in the broadcast industry. Thanks for watching this video. I hope it was inspiring and you feel motivated to check out the DreamChip cameras with all their amazing features that will match them up to any other camera you have in your broadcast production using Skyhoy's controllers. Follow us on social media if you want to stay on top of the latest news from Skyhoy. We have lots of them coming out with our new Blue Pill Inside controllers, with Reactor, new features, new device course, even new parameters. <laughs> I think we have integrated basically all of them in the DreamChip cameras, but maybe there's a single one that we missed. And we will also communicate about that if there's any updates or improvements that we want to share with you. So follow us on social media, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and see you hopefully soon at a trade show somewhere in the world.